Growl Tiger's Last Stand Growl Tiger was a bravo cat who traveled on a barge. In fact, he was the roughest cat that ever roamed at large. From Gravesend up to Oxford, he pursued his evil aims, rejoicing in his title of the Terror of the Thames. His manners and appearance did not calculate to please. His coat was torn and seedy, he was baggy at the knees. One ear was somewhat missing, no need to tell you why, and he scowled upon a hostile world from the one The cottagers of Rotherith knew something of his fame. At Hammersmith and Putney, people shuddered at his name. They would fortify the hen house, lock up the silly goose, when the rumor ran along the shore. Growl tigers on the loose! Woe to the weak canary that fluttered from its cage. Woe to the pampered Pekingese that faced Growl Tiger's rage. Woe to the bristly bandicoot that lurks on foreign ships. And woe to any cat with whom Growl Tiger came to grips. But most to cats of foreign race, his hatred had been vowed. To cats of foreign name and race, no quarter was allowed. The Persian and the Siamese regarded him with fear, because it was a Siamese had mauled his missing ear. Now on a peaceful summer night, all nature seemed at play. The tender moon was shining bright. The barge at Molsey lay. All in the balmy moonlight, it lay rocking on the tide, and Growl Tiger was disposed to show his sentimental side. His bucko mate, Grumbuskin, long since had disappeared, for to the bell at Hampton he had gone to wet his beard, and his bosom, tumbled Brutus, he too had stolen away. In the yard behind the lion he was prowling for his prey. In the forepeak of the vessel, Growl Tiger sate alone, concentrating his attention on the Lady Griddlebone, and his raffish crew were sleeping in their barrels and their bunks, as the Siamese came creeping in their sampans and their junks. Growl Tiger had no eye or ear for aught but Griddlebone, and the lady seemed enraptured by his manly baritone. Disposed to relaxation and awaiting no surprise, but the moonlight shone reflected from a thousand bright blue eyes. And closer still, and closer, the sampans circled around. And yet from all the enemy, there was not heard a sound. The lovers sang their last duet, in danger of their lives, for the foe was armed with toasting forks and cruel carving knives. Then Gilbert gave the signal to his fierce Mongolian horde. With a frightful burst of fireworks, the chinks they swarmed aboard. Abandoning their sampans and their pullaways and junks, they battened down the hatches on then the griddle bone. She bones. gave a screech, for she was badly scared. I am sorry to admit it, but she quickly disappeared. She probably escaped with ease. I'm sure she was not drowned, but a serried ring of flashing steel Growl Tiger did surround. The ruthless foe pressed forward in stubborn rank on rank. Growl Tiger, to his vast surprise, was forced to walk the plank. He who a hundred victims had driven to that drop, at the end of all his crimes, was forced to go kerflip, kerflop. Oh, there was joy in Wapping when the news flew through the land. At Maidenhead and Henley, there was dancing on the strand. Rats were roasted whole at Brentford and at Victoria Dock, and a day of celebration was commanded in Bangkok. 